If y'all about to write another check, say woo. Okay, that's the one person. That's what we can talk to right there. All right, we're just joking. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Matt Fields from Barclays to introduce Major Rogers. Thank you for the introduction. I show love. I show love everywhere we go, baby. Thank you so much. Welcome everybody to the final keynote of the day with our special guest, Major Michelle Rogers, who will be here on the stage in, in just a moment. Um, as you just said, my name is Matt Fields, head of corporate communications for Barclays U.S. Consumer Bank, just a few blocks away here in Wilmington. Uh, I also serve as our executive sponsor of Emerge, which is our Young Professionals Employee Resource Group. Uh, and we're proud to be a sponsor for the Mill Summit for our fifth consecutive year. Uh, it really is a great way for us to kind of live up to our commitment of giving back to the communities where we live and work. Uh, and sort of taking part in events like this is, is really key to, to the culture that we have here at our company. Uh, on a personal level, you know, I was really um, grateful and benefited greatly early in my career by having some incredible mentors who, as people were talking on the stage earlier, kind of saw something in me, uh, really pushed me to learn and grow and stretch. And you know, being involved in our young professional employee resource group and events like this is an opportunity for me to kind of give back and something that's been very meaningful to me in my life, and I know the power it can have on people's lives. So I have the great pleasure today uh, of introducing uh, Major Michelle Rogers, who is the commander of the 512th Airlift Wing at Dover Air Force Base. Um, she and her squadron are responsible for very vital mission support in a lot of capacities through uh, manpower and personnel, force development, airmen and family services, and client systems. She actually enlisted in the Air Force Reserve back in 1997, and early in her career uh, in the Air Force, uh, worked in a lot of capacities through human resources. Uh, she was then commissioned as an aircraft maintenance officer in 2009, where her team supported uh, missions around the world, including Enduring Freedom, Iraqi Freedom, and New Dawn. Um, she's gonna talk to us today about her military career, some of the lessons that she's learned, uh, and how equity and inclusion play a role in our professional lives. Um, following her remarks, she's going to do a fireside chat with Danae Crumrine, who is the Corporate Communications Manager for Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield here in Delaware, and also happens to be the Executive Co-Chair of this year's Mill Summit. So if you would please join me in giving a very warm welcome to Michelle and Danae, and thanking Michelle for her service to our country and for the sacrifice that her family makes that goes along with that. Thank you. We gotta wait. We gotta wait for the music to like get me off. I'll do it till the sun goes down. That's good. We gotta wait for the unstoppable. Cook. We're good. Thank you for that. Thank you. All right, we're here. We're here. We made it. Hey everyone. Thanks so much for being here. My name is Danae, and I am super stoked to see everyone in the audience right now because last year we were virtual. And the Mill Summit is something that's very near and dear to my heart. I've been involved for the last five years, right, Charlie? It's five years, right? Um, as many years as it's been around. And to have watched it grow and to know that a lot of you have been part of that growth is just really special to me. So equally as special is being up here with my new friend, Michelle Rogers, who, as Delaware goes, I actually knew her husband, Jay, first. We were in Leadership Delaware together. And then we crossed paths during the Honorary Commanders Program at Dover Air Force Base. Um, and so it's very cool for that to all kind of come full circle and for us to be on stage together right now to talk a lot about her journey, and where she's been, and where she's going. And I will do stop and do a shameless plug for the Dover Air Force Base Honorary Commanders Program. Please talk to me or Michelle afterward if you're interested. It's an amazing community relations initiative that they do at Dover Air Force Base, and it's been a really incredible experience. So I highly encourage you to consider that if it's something you're interested in doing. Okay, we'll get to it. So, Michelle, we got a nice intro from Matt. Was there anything that you wanted to add before we got started? Um, well, I mean, I just want to, you know, thank everyone that's been involved for the opportunity to be here, being, uh, you know, a military member uh, requires a, a lot of balance with uh, saying certain things. So I want to give a disclaimer that uh, I'm not speaking on behalf of the Air Force and that these, uh, these views and 
uh, topics that we'll talk about today are merely from my experience um, as a member in the Air Force for 25 years. Awesome. Well, I know that you recently got a new role, so a round of applause for Michelle and that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, but I think what we're going to talk a lot about today will stem from your previous experience. So can we talk a little bit about what that role looked like and some of your responsibilities and kind of how you got there? Sure. So just on Monday, I did step into a new role as the director of military and the Family Readiness Center, which is wonderful. I'm super excited to get to know my team. But on Friday, I was the squadron commander for the 512th Force Support Squadron. And uh, just for some context, uh, a squadron commander is very similar to that of a uh, strategic leader in uh, any large organization. And uh, basically, we all have accountability for the organization's mission, so that's similar. But where we're different is that we're obviously, you know, within the profession of arms, and we don't just focus on the members' professional lives, but we dig deep into their personal lives as well. Okay, I definitely want to unpack that a little bit later. Yes. Um, is there anything particularly exciting or innovative that your team has been working on in that while you were in that role? Yes, so just last week before I transitioned out, um, we unveiled the what they call the Zen Zone. Um, I challenged them with creating a place in the workspace where they could just reset, you know, take a knee, recharge. I mean, life is hard and so is work. And so um, having a, a place within your work environment where you can just go and, um, you know, and unwind um, for about a half hour. Um, it was just awesome. So we found an unused, like a, a closet that wasn't really being used, um, overhauled the whole thing, put a massage chair in there, some, some tranquil wall art, uh, a waterfall, and boom, we have, a, we have a space that, you know, I can show my, my teammates that really care about their, their, their mental health, their well-being, even throughout the workday. So the Zen Zone is open for business, and um, they're all really excited about it. That's awesome. I really love to hear that. And that's something that's been thematic for us with the Mill Summit, right? Everyone, we've been talking about mental health, wellness, and kind of like reconnecting with yourself and, and your mm -hmm. loved ones and maybe unplugging a little bit from work. And I have to think that in that role and the jobs that you have can be very taxing. Um, so what is kind of tangential to the Zen room, but more from the people perspective, how do you work with your team to ensure that they are checking in mentally, that they are well, mm -hmm. um, that as a leader, you're kind of making sure that everyone is where they should be, not just in work, but in life. Sure. Um, so my passion is for people, and that may sound very cliche, but there's, they will let you know that there's a, um, a time carved out just for them where we will, you know, no interruptions, no titles, we're just people. We're just talking about our families, whatever we're binge watching. Um, so in that uh, time that we spend together, the connection that we build is so powerful. And so if I see them walking through the hall, I, I, I just know they're, they're off or, you know, that, um, you know, they might be having a, a rough day. Um, so again, connecting and really, really digging deep and getting to know them on a personal level has, has worked for me. Awesome. And another topic that we've been talking about a lot here is the diversity, equity, inclusion piece. And I want to kind of dig into some of that with you because I know you lead a fairly large team, right, mm -hmm. of diverse background, diverse yes. schools of thought. So talk a little bit about what your team looks like. Um, so, yes, um, this is actually one of the things I really love about being in the military is the the diversity. I mean, we have people from all walks of life, uh, you know, different religions, ethnicities, ages, and the perspectives that you get from bringing people together that are different is has been amazing. So instead of, you know, viewing it as a struggle um, or a challenge, I, I've really, really found it to be positive and find out that actually we have more in common than we think. Um, so Again, just the beauty of bringing people together that are different uh, to in support of a, a complex mission um, has been a, a positive for me. 
And there's something that you shared with me previous to this, uh, kind of your philosophy, the lens that you lead through. And I would love for you to share that with oh, everyone. Yeah. So most of you have heard of the golden, you know, the golden rule. Um, treat people how you know you want to be treated. But um, I lead by using the platinum rule, which is treat people how they want to be treated. And again, how can you do that? You have to know them. You have to get to know them on a, a deeper level. So the platinum rule really works for me. I love the platinum rule. Charlie, can you pin that online <laughs> virtually? I know you can start a comment. I'd love to see that up there. Also, as a side note, I forgot to mention in the beginning that if you have questions in the audience here live, we will be taking those at the end, but it, uh, also feel free, those online and in person, to use the chat um, or the Q&A in the, in the app. Uh, the app. Oh, I forget what it's called. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Hop in. Hop in. Um, please, please feel free to add those, and we'll be keeping an eye out for those. Thank you. So the platinum rule I love, and feel like that's also a quotable for the Instagram page, you guys. Um, but I'm not telling you how to do your app, so I'm just really excited about the platinum rule. Uh, so I love that. But what I'm curious about, too, for that is was there someone in your career, your life that really modeled that for you? Because I don't think like it's something you really fall into. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So um, one of my mentors, actually one of my old bosses, uh, called all of us in one day and asked us to tell him how we like to receive praise. And we were just like, we're in the military. You tell us how we like to receive praise, sir. Um, he's like, no, really. Like, just, you know, tell me when you do a good job, how you want to be recognized. And so in the military, we have this thing where we like to recognize you publicly on a stage with all your friends around and we make a big deal out of it. Well, everybody doesn't like that, you know? And um, one day I came back to my desk after you know, doing something noteworthy and there was a, a handwritten note. And I cherish that note to this day because it was like, he really listened to me. Like, oh my gosh, he didn't just, you know, check the box. And so, again, how would he have known that if we, he hadn't tried to get to know me? So I definitely wanted to adopt this policy when I became a squadron commander. And from day one, I just started scheduling everybody out so I could meet with them. And then during the time we're together, I casually asked them, you know, so how do you like to receive praise? Like it was my own, right? Um, but it has paid, paid off significantly. Right. Copying is the best form of flattery, right? <laughs> and I love that, too, in terms of we're all kind of conditioned to learn how to take criticism or that we have to take criticism. But I really love the flip of that where we're being asked how to receive praise. Sure. Um, and I, that's something I would love to start implementing with the folks that I work with because I think it's really meaningful. And so I'm going to transition us a little bit out of work space into family because you have all of these responsibilities as a squadron commander mm -hmm. with this kind of, in my mind, an added pressure of being in the military. I think there's a level of decorum and respect and, uh, and honor that comes with that that maybe others in civilian jobs don't necessarily feel. Um, you're married to Jay, which I know is a challenge. <laughs> I know you're out there, Jay. And you are also the mo a mom of twin girls. And so I'd love to hear, and I think anyone out here who is balancing family life and I mean to be honest hobbies or like just getting enough sleep that kind of thing um would love to hear how you manage all of those different <laughs> pieces um I don't know I'm still trying to figure it out no <laughs> just kidding so everybody says balance right oh you got to be balanced it's so cliche it's like such a buzzword but um the what balance looks like for us is being super intentional very deliberate about all the things that we have going on, how we're gonna execute those things. And then most of you have heard of building your you know, professional network. Well, Jay and I had to build our um, personal network and that has been huge, finding a support system that we can rely on and trust to help us you know, juggle all the many things. And Jay is also a squadron commander. So you know, we love a little punishment in our lives, clearly. Um, but yeah, we have to be uh, very, you know, careful about what we're willing to say yes to. I mean, burnout is real, especially in our in a position like ours. So again, build your personal, you know, network, especially if you have small children. It just you, you want to do it all, and you can't really clone yourself. So you need some strong people to to back you up sometimes. Yes. Yes, I love building out the, per, the personal network because we're here building out our professional mm -hmm. networks, right? 
And I think we take for granted sometimes that we need people behind the scenes and people who really yes. know our day to day to help us kind of manage things. Um, I think that you have an example you could share about being deployed and how you guys kind of manage that situation. So this time Jay was deployed um, and then and I was home with the girls. Um, and of course, you know, you, work doesn't stop and you can't really take, take a break in a position like ours. So, um, at this point, I think I was teaching ROTC as an instructor at the University of Delaware, which again, I mean, you're up at 5 a.m. with the cadets running, you know, outside, and then you run right into class. The schedule is very rigorous uh, for an instructor. And so, that went on for a while and then when he came home instantly he picked up all the day-to-day -day stuff like he's like you know what we're high-fiving i'm out i'm already out the door so it takes a good um partnership and you really do you know have to be a team and work together or it won't work so i would like if you're comfortable sharing the story about um a life lesson that you learned when it came to oh, the life lesson. being present for your kids <sighs> okay all right um so I'm burning the candle at both ends. Jay had left again. I don't know where you are, Jay, but I hope you heard in my voice that I wasn't happy about this for a year. And um, yeah, I'm working long hours and I'm the last person to pick the kids up at the youth center. And then I'll take them back to the office. And I'm just like, man, this is, this is, this is really intense. So we go to visit my parents who live down outside of Ocean City, Maryland. And I would go to the boardwalk and we're walking, we're looking at all these like hometown hero banners. And um, my mom kind of gets to one, a light, uh, one, of the, one of the light poles and she just stops. And I'm like, mom, you know what's going on? And she's looking up and it's me. <laughs> I'm up there as a hometown hero. And I'm like, this woman doesn't even know how to work her iPhone. Like how'd she pull this off, right? And the twins go, mommy, mommy, you're a hero. <laughs> Just like, oh my gosh, I'm speechless in this moment, right? Because I'm like, wow, I've kind of done something right. Like, you know, they, anybody could be their hero, but it, you know, it's me. And so it just kind of validated all of the hard work and dedication that I've kind of put, you know, put into the military in that one moment and made me realize that maybe I am setting a good example for them and maybe I shouldn't beat myself up so much. Um, but on the flip side, a friend noticed that I was burning the candle at both ends and she sat me down and she says, you know, oh, and I started compensating by buying them, you know, a whole bunch of presents and stuff because I just felt really guilty because I'm sure everybody, some people understand mom guilt. And she sat me down and she's like, you know, presents can't replace presents. And I was like, oh, yeah. I still get <laughs> it cut me deep, that. right? Yeah. And I was just like, you're right. They, she's like, they just want to be with you. They just want to spend some time with you. They think you're so cool. So in that moment, I just, I just decided to, you know, replace um, buying them things with time with me. And it, it's, it's re amazing rewards because they're only going to be little ones, right? And like, we can be replaced in a heartbeat. And so I had to think about what matters most. And instead of climbing this, you know, this leadership ladder that we, you know, we strive to, to do great things, it made me realize what's really important. So yes, you can have it all, but something's gonna suffer and it depends on what you want that to look like. <sighs> Thanks for getting me all emotional on so, stage. Well, I love those, I love both of those stories because I think they paint such a realistic picture that everyone here can relate to, right? We're working hard, we're doing the best that we can and we think that we're just like, we're just at, on the grind, right? We're just go, 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 go. And there's always a moment I think that all of us have experienced where we realize maybe we weren't putting our time and effort into not necessarily the right or wrong thing, but the best thing in that moment, yes. right? And so why I love that story and I love that you were, I really appreciate your vulnerability, vulnerability in that moment um, because it's hard to talk about those moments where we're like, man, we really kind of, Missed the mark there. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I think is equally as beautiful is the hometown hero story. It still warms my heart, even though I've heard it <laughs> six times and I keep asking to hear it again. Um, but I think that's something important for us all to take away today is I hope that you have those moments, and I'm sure you do, but you hold on to them and you save them. You get that nice, nice email, you have a feel good folder in your inbox, you get that thank you note, you just tuck it away somewhere because there are going to be days 
where someone sits you down and said, you're not doing it right, by the way. Right. And that's the moment where you need the hometown hero memory mm -hmm. to say, okay, but I have done it right and I can do it right. Sure. So let's stay on track. So I just, I love those two stories that you, that you were so kind to share with me. Um, and I could, now I'm getting a little emotional. Okay. <laughs> uh, so back, kind of back to your kids, but I think in the role that you play in the military as well is kind of a cool thing for your kids to see because that's not, mm -hmm. you know, I wouldn't say common. Um, so what's something that you and maybe even you and Jay collectively try to really model for the girls? Yeah, so we joke that we don't necessarily know if we're doing this parenting thing right, but we know how to be a good citizen, right? Like that's something we know how to do. So we try to, um, we're very much um, into our faith and we volunteer a lot with our, um, our church and we're very active in the community. So we bring the girls along with us to show them um, Kind of what right looks like in our eyes to be a, a good citizen you know volunteer your time donate things that you know to people who are less fortunate and the one thing we're struggling with is really unplugging and spending time as a family so we're trying the, we're trying right we're doing some things really well and then some things we're still working on but um Overall, we're trying to be intentional, again, and deliberate about um, making sure that we are just good examples for them. Awesome. So I'm going to circle back to work a little bit um, as I think about the people in my life who have modeled good examples in both work, work ethic or just drive or passion. Um, and I think something that really drew me to being able to moderate the session with you is that you are... Um, a strong woman in a male dominated field and would love to hear your perspective on being in that space in your skin. Oh. Um, well, to be frank, I mean, there's many times where I'm the only, you know, not just woman of color, but, um, you know, woman period at the table, um, surrounded by, you know, men and, as uh, you know, as amazing as the Air Force is with you know getting it right with diversity, equity, inclusion, um, we still have, you know we still have some work to do. But they're, they're doing a great job, and they recognize that. But I can't tell you how many times where I've had to professionally assert myself um, because you know I'll say, uh, "Hey, how about this idea?" and it's just kind of glazed over, and then a guy will say the same thing, and everybody's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, that's a great idea." I'm just like, "Really? Did this just happen?" So I have, again, had to professionally assert myself, but also take the high road and just not play the victim. Like, oh, you know, I'm a woman, woe is me. Um, no, I still maintain my, uh, I'm gonna be objective, I'm gonna be confident, uh, but there are times I recognize that and I just, I just keep pressing because I'm not gonna allow it to you know, affect me in a negative way. I, and I, I'm not one to usually speak on these types of topics in terms of being a woman in a man's space, but yeah. I do think that's a great example for our guy allies out there. If you have a female coworker who is really brilliant and she's not being heard and you're seeing that, that's your opportunity to reiterate what she's saying so that maybe it is heard, um, even if it's coming out of your mouth, but that's your way of supporting her. And I think, for me, I admire Michelle for the strength and the grit that she's displaying in this space uh, because it is. It's a hard place to be in sometimes yeah. if you don't have the support of, of your teammates um, and, and feeling that kind of empowerment. So sure. thank you Thanks for, for the plug to yeah. all the guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, right? Okay. No, no, we don't have any feminists out there. Okay. Um, so there are some other things that you face too in terms of moving up the ladder or in dealing with leadership. And I think they're all relatable experience in terms of how do we navigate dealing with the folks, quote unquote, above us, or even competing with people on the same maybe hierarchy of things. So what are some ways that you kind of dealt with those challenges? So, you know, I feel like my, my niche, I finally kind of know what it is. And it's just, main, just maintaining this positive attitude, like this, this outlook of, kind of letting things just roll off, you know, not harboring, you know, ill feelings towards people. It's, it's crazy because deep down inside, I could totally, you know, be a different person and, and say things that, that really bother me. But at the end of the day, I'm just like, I know my capabilities. I know what I bring to the table. I know what I bring to the team. And um, 
I just I'm not going to I'm not going to think really live there, you know, mm -hmm. that that long. Um, and then depending on the situation of somebody that works for me or somebody that I work for, um, I just like to have a conversation sometimes and just try and figure out what's going on. So I'm not also afraid to kind of co confront the issue mm -hmm. in a respectful manner. But I've always taken the high road and um, it's worked out for me. Yes, clearly, <laughs> clearly. Thank you for sharing that. So have you had any, and I'm a big proponent of what I'm about to talk about, mentors, right? Mentorship, oh, yeah. sponsorship, everybody. If you don't have a mentor or a sponsor, please find someone who can be those things for you. They're different things. Um, but I have experienced through my time in Delaware the value in those types of relationships. So who are some mentors or some sponsors that have really helped you in your career? Um, so just shining examples, period, are uh, my grandmother and my mother, like strongest women I know, amazing work ethic, still nurturing, just crushing it, you know, great example in general. And I always go to them for, uh, for sound advice. But in the military, I think back to a leader who saw something in me that I definitely didn't see in myself. And Colonel Cooper, um, biggest, scariest colonel I know, called me into his office one day and just told me point blank, you should be leading people. I think you'd be a great role model for young airmen. And I said, sir, um, yeah, I don't really don't see myself as a leader and absolutely nobody's a role model. And um, he said, would you be willing to be open to the process? And I was just like, oh, can I say no? Because <laughs> uh, it's the military, right? And um, he, says, he says, no, think about it and let me know. So fast forward to me, obviously, agreeing um, to be open to what that might look like and being placed into a role and um, you know, starting kind of at a lower level and getting groomed and um, just challenged and developed. And over time, it just kind of came organically that I, I, I'm doing this. And I even ask myself sometimes, I'm like, who put me in charge here? You know, and uh, Jay is like, you're, you're totally capable. And so I do have still have self-doubt because I never saw myself as a leader. I heard a, a quote, I think Plato said, like, if you want to be a leader or you think you should be a leader, then you probably shouldn't. So I think it requires a little bit of humility, too, um, to make sure that your people see you as an equal or one of them versus you feeling, you know, superior or that I'm bigger or better than you for some reason. I loved you talking about your mom and your grandmother too um, in an earlier conversation. Can you oh, tell us a little yes, bit about that? Yes, yes. So my mom was a you know single mom working hard, um, but you couldn't tell me that I didn't have the best life ever. And um, she and I are best friends today. I know this sounds so cliche, but just again, I admire the strength and again the just the humility, um, and then also being feminine. Like you don't have to lead with an iron fist, you know, just because you're in the military. So I love the balance of, um, you know, being a woman, but also knowing how to drive a point home um, respectfully. And then my grandma, hardest working woman I know, um, she's almost 80. She drives a school bus and she has the grit of Man, the toughest military person I know. She's five foot nothing and works the longest hours and then comes home and makes an amazing dinner and just, oh my gosh, she's, she's awesome. So I have these people in my life that I, you know, I need to, uh, I need to bring my, you know, bring my A game because they definitely have, have shown me what it looks like to excel on a, a different level. And she owned a store, right? Oh, yes. So my other grandmother. <laughs> Well, so I have another grandmother, um, Grandma Helen, rest in peace. She owned a child, a, a clothing store in Ocean City. Um, first, you know, black business, female business owner in Ocean City in her time. And I would be at the store hanging out with her. And, you know, she just, she did it all. Like, who's this woman own, owning this business, this clothing store? And uh, back in those times, it was, it was definitely a challenge. And so again, just kind of seeing her do it all made me realize I, I definitely have big shoes to fill, uh, you know, as a leader. Yep. And you are a leader. And to that point, what are your expectations? We know what they are of yourself. Mm -hmm. What 
are the expectations that you have of up and coming leaders kind of under your purview or just folks that you're kind of helping along their careers? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, when somebody says, oh, you know, um, you're going to get a new manager. And I'm like, yeah, don't use the word manager because I need a leader. And there's definitely a difference. Um, and you, that person will understand that people are not programs, they're not processes, they're people that you absolutely have to get to know on that deeper level. Like you can't just scratch the surface. If you're gonna work for me, I need to know that, uh, that, that, you, that you really truly care about them, you know? And that's, that's worked for me and a lot of people that have, have come along and been under me as a leader have said they've never, uh, been challenged to really get to know their people on such a, a such a deep level. So I don't know, either I'm doing something really right or really wrong, but um, again, people are just people and, and I have a passion for making sure that people feel uh, that they're an individual and not just another you know number or an employee within the organization. Sure. And as you build your teams out or you put people on projects, how do you kind of do so from a lens of diversity equity and inclusion, or just one of those things, um, in terms of making sure that the project's going to succeed, that the people are going to succeed. Because I think there's that other component to DE&I, right, where it's, let's be mindful and intentional about that, but also doing it to the best effect and yeah. best outcome. So one of the first projects that I had to um, put together when I got into command was uh, something that was gonna boost our morale, kind of, sorta. and. Um, I, I single-handedly went through the organization and picked the most different group of people that I possibly could because I didn't want it to be a room of, you know, how everybody thinks the same kind of sort of. I definitely didn't want, you know, the ages to be the same, ethnicities, the backgrounds. So it's just this big old melting pot of people who all want to come together to work towards, you know, the same goal. And it was incredible. And so that's my jam now. I'm making sure I put the most the most people that are, you know, most different together and then something something beautiful will really happen. Awesome. So what are some words of advice that you might give to your fellow leaders managing large, diverse teams? Well, definitely, you know, come together as a team first. I know everybody says like, oh, we're a team, but are you really a team? You know, like, do you really feel like it or do you feel like I'm just coming here to get a paycheck? Um, so the squadron that I was commanding um, primarily was a, a support agency. And we dealt with a lot of customers outside of the base, inside of the base. And I wanted them to raise the bar. So I said, let's come up with an acronym that y'all will really like, you know, remember. Because nobody knows their company's vision or mission. But if it's just something that's memorable um, and you plaster it all over the walls, it be, kind of becomes a part of you. So um, we came together as a team, we kind of all gelled together, we got into a room, talked about what this looked like for us, what excellent customer service looks like for us. I came up with an acronym, RAISE, um, responsibility, you know, attitude, innovation, um, what's this? S for service, and E for enthusiasm. And you know, once we kind of unpacked what each one of those looked like for us, it was something they could understand because we're all a customer. We've all been a customer. And we, we know what we want in you know, customer service. And I said, you know, I'm not trying to plug it, but I was like, I want our level of customer service to be like Chick-fil-A. And like everybody knew exactly what I wanted. I want you to go above and beyond. She knew what I meant. I want you to go above and beyond. I want you to go extra catch up. I mean, like pens. But anyway, we plastered all this, this all over the wall. That's been like our rallying cry. Like we raised the bar, you know, and it literally has changed the culture of this like kind of mundane uh, organization of like, oh, we just push papers. Oh, we have a thankless job. Um, so yeah, getting them motivated and excited about something is kind of the first step. And then um, I took this really uh, awesome um, uh, leadership philosophy from John Maxwell. It was the four L's. And I feel like if anybody does this, you'll be successful. And the first L was starting with listening, just listening to them, you know? Listen to people, um, you know, about their personal lives and their professional lives. Uh, and then the second L was learn. So I literally sat next to each employee and kind of said, tell me your job, teach me, kind of show me, walk me through it, asking questions. And then the third L was actually love. And I was like, love, this is weird. But from a place of sometimes you have to love even when you don't feel like it. Um, and then the other L was, which has been a struggle for me, but let go. 
And I'm like, but the whole organization's gonna crumble. No, I can take a day off. Now I can, but um, letting go, you know, you empower your people. They, you know, they're a lot more confident and, you know, just making sure you let go. So those four L's have really, really helped me um, throughout the last year, because that's kind of when I was introduced to, to that leadership philosophy. Thanks for sharing that, that's awesome. <laughs> I love that, that love, I love that love was in that. Um, if there are any questions from the audience, We'll be taking those. So I don't know if we have someone that's prepared to help us with that. It's Jimmy, correct? Not Johnny. Learned that on my way over. Um, is there anything else that you want to share? About? Those, that was kind of the end of my questions and spilling yeah. your personal life out to the audience with no, your permission. No, no. This has been <laughs> like, oh my God, it's so humbling. Um, when Charlie originally said very casually, um, hey, you should be one of our keynote speakers. I was just like, Charlie, get out of here. Charlie's my honorary commander, and they paired us together in the honorary commander program, which we are taking volunteers for. Um, we say that to Charlie a lot. <laughs> Charlie, get out of here. Yeah, because he was just so <laughs> casual about it. And I was just like, what can I tell these people, these young professionals, these, you know, these, these, these professional speakers and uh, people with so many designations behind their name. And he said, just be yourself. And um, it's been an enlightening moment because <laughs> I feel like I've kind of grown in this space, like even preparing for the talk, um, you know, just kind of, I guess, feeling capable and all the things that I've done, you know, they're, they are pretty significant. And so it's allowed yes. me to kind of go back and reflect on all the things that I've done in this celebrate those 25 things. years. Yes. I see a question. Oh, we got a question. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Oh, sorry, I forgot. There's a mic. This is a professional situation, so we get a microphone and a runner. We do. Yes. Only the best for you. Hello. Hi. I'm Shaniqua Kent. Um, can you tell us about a time in your military career where you failed forward? Because we talked about a lot of your success. Sure. And um, I think that's really something that would be critical for this audience to just you know, know what that looks like. So, so let me make sure I understand your question. A time when I, when I failed at something. Okay. Okay. Oh, failed forward. Okay. All right. That's like a corporate term. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, that's really, really good. I failed at so many things. Um, so I think, uh, sometimes we, um, when we have to deploy or, you know, go downrange, we have to, you know, make sure we select the best person. And when you see something in somebody, you're just like on it. You're like, you know what? You'd be the perfect person for this, um, this tour. And they're pushing. They're like, no, no, I don't want to go. I'm not, no, I'm not ready. Um, but you, again, you're the leader, you're the boss. So you can kind of make that command decision. And, I, I said, you know what? This is firm. You're going. No questions asked. You're going to love it. It's going to be great. And it wasn't great <laughs> uh, for a while. And then one of those aha moments happened where he said, you know what? I have to be here. But this was when he returned. This was one of the most ex amazing experiences of my life. And I was just like, thanks for pushing me out of the nest. As the, you know, the big mama bird, sometimes we got to push our babies out of the nest, really see them fly. So he kicked and screamed. And it, again, it wasn't good for the whole, pretty much the whole duration. And I was just like, man, I can't believe I did, I, I did this. Um, I did it for the good of, of who I know that he can be. But the success story, I guess, is that, um, again, he came to me and said, I, I'm, I'm so sorry I even put you through that because this was the most amazing opportunity of my life. And uh, so in the moment, not good. At the end, very good. That was good. I totally forgot about that story. Thank you so much. Thank you for making me remember my, my failures. <laughs> you got any more you want to share? No, 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 no. That was hard too. There's so many things that happen, you know, yeah. that I, you know, but you, you, you think about it in the moment and you move on. So Absolutely. you have to be really deliberate when Absolutely. you think about these questions. Um, are there any, I see one back here. Oh, wow. Back here. The runner's not running. He's, he's walking. Sorry. Through the table. I've been in the military too long. <laughs> <laughs> Hi.
Hi, uh, my name is Kelsey. I work with leadership development students at University of Delaware. Um, and I'd love to know how do you practice and or maintain your positivity when you're in really challenging situations? Oh, man. Um, so I think it comes natural with being a, one of those glass half full people. And um, generally optimistic to believe that the best it's all going to kind of work out. Maybe it's seeing life a little through rose colored, rose colored glasses sometimes. Um, and of course, I mean, I know, you know, there's, you have to be a realist at times, but just kind of putting my, putting my best foot forward and letting kind of the chips fall where they may and realizing that I've done my very best and I just have to be okay with that. And you know, again, it's taken a while to get there. Um, Cause you feel like you're like settling sometimes, but I have so much, I guess, just joy and gratitude inside for people that have poured into me, seen things in me that I didn't see in myself, um, opportunities that have come my way that I'm just kind of so scratching my head, like, well, how does this even happen? And so I, then I think about individuals who would love to trade places with me on the days where I'm just like, you know, life's not going great. Um, so I try to count my blessings and I realize I have more blessings than not blessings. <laughs> There's more good, I guess, than bad, you know, more pros, um, in my life. And so I just really try to take a moment and really remember those things. Cause you know, we can beat ourselves up all day and think about all the bad stuff, but there's always, 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 I promise you somebody that has it a thousand times worse than you. So I try to remember that and just think about, um, how, you know, how, how grateful I am for the life that I've been given. Are there any questions up top? Sorry, Vips, I forgot about y'all up there. How y'all doing up there, That's the Vips? Cool for school. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> and you have no, a question? It's fine. It's fine. I, we can kind of hear you. Project. Yeah. Um, good job. That was great. That was very good. Thank well you done. so much. Yes. Yes. Were you a cheerleader or in theater? <laughs> okay. okay. All right. I'm impressed. You, you want to join the Air Force? <laughs> yeah. We're yeah. always recruiting. I, I, I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. I was trying to recruit. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, so it's funny because um, I always say, you know, be ready so you don't have to get ready. And so, you know, positions that I'm interested in, I'm going to want to make sure that I am, I've checked all those boxes. I'm not going to show up kind of uh, needing to do something. So in the military, professional military image is a big deal. And, you know, wanting to go into a certain role that requires you to look the part, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to try until I'm, I've, I've done everything that I can to be ready. And again, being at a table with, you know, other leaders, they may not even be as qualified as you, but you won't be able to say that I haven't checked every box. And so again, just really pushing yourself to go to the next level at, at every turn. And that requires a lot of discipline as well. So discipline's tough. Yes, no problem. Any other questions? Yes? Oh, another one up top? Oh, okay, sorry, can't see you guys. Um, so I want to be sure I understand the question. So instead of giving criticism first, yeah, how did you how did you find your way into that positivity first? I think what she's saying is uh -huh. we're very used to the criticism oh, first yeah. or being quick to criticize. Yes. So I feel like there was probably an unnatural progression sure. or transition from your mind reframing mm -hmm. of, oh, you're doing it wrong to what's yeah. happening that's right. Oh, this is good. Did I, did I get that this right? This is so good. This is so good. Yes. Um, I was going to go into something that just happened on Monday. I don't know if it's too fresh. 
But an employee came in very, you know, upset, disgruntled even. And after I kind of diffused the situation, instead of throwing the book at him, I said, you know, I see something positive in you. And I, you know, I want to help you nurture that. And he was just kind of like, really? <laughs> because he was ready for the criticism and he really deserved it, honestly. <laughs> but <laughs> I have learned people just want to be heard. They want to be seen and they want you to be genuine in your interactions with them and know that they're not just, you're not just checking a box. And so over time, I think I've evolved kind of into that person who hasn't, you know, dressed you down because I have that in me. I don't want to be that person. And I've realized that you get more flies with honey sometimes, yep. right? Yep. Honey. Um, so it's not an ego stroke or anything. It's just changing the narrative to get them in a different mindset, but still being able to let them know where they might have areas of improvement. But again, respectfully, um, your your um, not energy. Your um, what is it? Where you're like trying to be a nice person. Your intention, yeah. your tone. It all matters. Your body language. If you're like checking your phone while you're talking to them. So again, going the extra mile and really making a person feel like you know uh, how they want to feel. And I have a really big personality too. So if I realize that you're not a morning person, I'm not gonna come in, you know, choo choo, good morning, wake up. I'm gonna wait till about 10 and I'm gonna go by your office <laughs> and I'm gonna say good morning in a very subdued tone. And then I'm gonna ask you, how was your evening? So again, it's being deliberate, like really having to focus and take time. Is there things, are there things I have to be doing? Yeah, I'm busy all the time. But I'm telling you, when you feed into your people, the rewards that will pay off, exceed anything that you could possibly ever want and your team will begin to have this momentum everywhere you know you, there might be an outlier here or there we just kind of you know we deal with them but the majority of the people are they're going to want to come to work there the, there's a culture shift they're going to have a positive attitude they know that you truly care about them so they want to work as hard as they possibly can for you and so that's been my experience that's a great thank question. you so much yeah. anybody else sierra she needs a mic. Oh, you got one coming. Hey, that's a runner. He should be in the Air Force. <laughs> Thank you for, for being with us and sharing today. You mentioned earlier um, in your in the space that you work in, there's a decorum, there's um, likely protocol and policy that you, of course, have to abide by. How do you um, challenge particular systems um, that don't might not necessarily support you in the skin that you're in and how you identify while authentically being yourself. Oh, that's good too. Um, so I think, you know, the, the term kill them with kindness is a thing. And um, I kind of just kind of in, uh, insert myself sometimes in spaces that are uncomfortable. And if I hear about, you know, it's an all boys, you know, club uh, type of uh, lunch, I might just show up. And then I'm just like, you know, I'll, I'll observe, right? And I kind of inject where, where I can. But over time, um, having a personality that's um, likable, friendly, uh, supportive, um, it, it kind of allows you to be led into the club, I guess, think a little bit. As to where in the beginning, they don't really know how to handle you, especially as a woman, especially, you know, as a, as a black woman, they're just like, oh, we don't want her to come off as angry. And I'll never do that. Like, I'm never going to come out of my skin. No, you know, there's times where I'm like, I can't believe that crap. But in the moment, I'm going to be a staunch professional. I'm going to be uh, an ambassador of just supporting you. And you're just like, man, I just can't shake this woman. Like, nothing's going to break her. Um, so luckily I've had the, the strength, I guess, to kind of, um, take the high road and kind of, you know, kind of take, go, go high when they go low kind of thing, which again, is not easy, but over time it's, it's definitely worked for me and had a lot more rewards. So thanks. We got a question in the chat. What would you recommend to a leader that is trying to make their team a team when everyone is on different shifts? Oh man. Um, Jay, you got this one? No, sorry. 
This is something I would ask my husband because he's a rock star. He bleeds blue, by the way, and has all the answers that I don't have. You know how they say iron sharpens iron? Man, I'm telling you. So on different shifts. Um, so I guess the closest thing I would have to this is um, – utilizing you know zoom or teams where right now i have people that aren't in the office so how do you bond together as a team you need to um make a time uh between the two the two shifts where we all come together and we your cameras have to be on and you have to talk like you, you need to be interactive and so again being intentional setting some of those guidelines not just letting them do whatever the heck you know they want to do because they don't realize it. They don't see the, the strategy, you know, that you, you have here. And so taking charge of the situation and doing whatever you can within your power, there is always an option. There's always a way. Sure. Thank you. Anyone else? I think we have time for one more. Upstairs, up, Bips, anyone? No? Okay. Oh, we got one over here. Excellent. Yep. I actually wrote my question in the chat because I don't oh. want to talk. Oh, but, I'm sorry. It's not loading. <laughs> I've been checking. Um, do you feel like you would be where you are today if you had told your commander that you weren't open to the process of becoming a leader? Um, yeah, yeah, actually, you know what? I, I, I can't say that I necessarily wouldn't be in a, a similar role because I've always had, even in lower ranking positions as an enlisted member, meaning, you know, no, no degree required. Um, I've always given a thousand percent in anything. And I, I haven't had drive my whole life and ambition and all that. I wasn't a great student in high school. I just kind of knew I wanted to be different. I wanted to separate myself from others, have a strong work ethic, um, I wanted to be confident. So I think, uh, I don't know if it was, uh, somebody said, you know, even if you're a street sweeper, be the best street sweeper you can be, right? So I'm taking out that trash. Um, even people that were under me, I'm like, let me get your trash. The whole servant leader thing. I realized I was doing that without even knowing it was a thing for so long. So, and I was always empowering people and, you know, motivating them to be their best self and taking them under my wing and trying to help them. So. Even if I you know, wasn't in the position that I am today, I honestly think that I would have, there's no way that I could, I would have been you know, stifled where I wouldn't be doing something in some type of leadership capacity. But um, yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Thank you so much. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone. Michelle, thank you so much for being with us. This has been so good. It's like free therapy. Thanks y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you all again for being here. We really appreciate it.